Today, we have an incredible story that is nothing less than a testament to faith and miracles. Get ready, because what I'm going to tell you will make you rethink the power of faith. Paul and Silas, after doing a good deed, end up being unjustly accused, severely beaten, and thrown into a dark prison. They were put in the deepest place of the prison and even had their feet shackled in heavy wooden blocks. But, believe it or not, at midnight, despite the pain and suffering, they began to pray and sing hymns to God so loudly that all the other prisoners could hear. A giant earthquake happened right at that moment, shaking the foundations of the prison. The doors opened on their own and the chains of all the prisoners came loose. This event is one of the many historical accounts we find in the Bible, showing how unwavering faith can really make a difference, even in the worst situations. Paul and Silas, instead of lamenting, turned their pain into worship, and something supernatural happened. But, why is this important to us today? This story is not just an account of the past, it brings valuable lessons about how faith can sustain us and even trigger miraculous changes in our lives especially in the most difficult moments. Before we continue, if you like biblical stories and are not yet subscribed, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Oh, and don't forget to turn on the bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Back to the story, this account is documented in the Book of Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 16, where Paul, on his second missionary journey, was guided by divine visions, changing his course several times by the direction of the Holy Spirit. Paul and his missionary team sailed from the Aegean Sea, from Asia to Europe, arriving first at Samothrace and then at Nepolis, until finally reaching Philippi, a journey that would mark the beginning of a new stage in the spread of Christianity. Philippi, a city with a rich Roman and Greek history, was known for its gold mines and as a Roman miniature after being established as a Roman colony. Here, Paul's preaching gained the first European converts, including Lydia. During their stay in Philippi, Paul and Silas encountered a young woman with a spirit of divination who followed them, proclaiming that they were servants of the Most High God. This spirit is identified as that of Python, a reference to Greek mythology. The young woman's ability to divine was lucrative for her masters and her liberation by Paul and Silas provoked a significant economic and spiritual conflict in the city. This episode highlights how the first major challenge of Christianity in European territory was not just spiritual or doctrinal, but also deeply rooted in the social and economic realities of the time. Thus, Paul's arrival in Philippi not only spread Christianity, but also challenged existing power structures showing how the message of the gospel went beyond words, deeply influencing society in complex and challenging ways. According to accounts from some ancient Greek authors, the priests of Python could be ventriloquists. This ability could also have been true for the young slave mentioned in the narrative. However, the writings indicate that, unlike being just a ventriloquist, the young woman actually possessed the spirit of divination. Paul, referring to her, makes it clear that she was under the influence of an evil spirit, responsible for her predictions and oracles. The young woman, upon encountering Paul and Silas, proclaimed two things. First, she identified them as servants of the Most High God, a term often used by pagans familiar with Judaism to refer to the Jewish God. She represented, at that moment, the pagans in search of a supreme deity and salvation from evil spirits. Secondly, she declared that they announced the way of salvation, indicating that the teaching of Paul and Silas was the way to achieve this salvation. These statements continued for several days until Paul, exhausted by the situation, confronted the evil spirit, commanding it in the name of Jesus Christ to leave the young woman. The spirit obeyed immediately. The young woman's deliverance resulted in the loss of her ability to predict the future, which did not please her masters, as they profited from her divinations. Although the praises directed at the missionaries were positive, Paul did not enjoy compliments coming from a possessed source, just as Jesus before him who rebuked the demons to be silent. It is not clear whether the young woman was converted after the spirit left. 
The reality of demonic possession is emphasized as a fact, contradicting the view of some theologians that this was something restricted to the first century. Demons still cause great harm today, and the power of the Holy Spirit is needed to expel them in the name of Jesus. Continuing with the story, after the young woman's deliverance, her masters, frustrated by the loss of the source of profit, imprisoned Paul and Silas and took them to court. There, they accused the two of causing a riot in the city and promoting practices not accepted by Roman law, highlighting that, as Romans, they were not allowed to adopt such customs. The young slave's situation became even more complicated. Although she possessed a gift that attracted attention, she was exploited by her unscrupulous owners who profited from her misfortune. When Paul freed her from the evil spirit, instead of celebrating her healing, her owners were furious at the loss of the source of income. The owners of the young woman, cunning and manipulative, knew how to play on the feelings of the population and the pride of Roman citizens. They accused Paul and Silas of promoting strange and unacceptable ideas and practices for Romans. The accusation was effective. The result was the cruel and unjust detention of Paul and Silas. They were severely punished without a preliminary trial, as was customary in cases involving non-Romans. The crowd turned against them, and the magistrates ordered them to be publicly beaten. This punishment had a twofold purpose, to humiliate those beaten and to discourage their followers. After the beating, Paul and Silas were thrown into prison, where the jailer was given strict orders to keep them under strict surveillance. In the biblical text, it does not say exactly how many times Paul and Silas were beaten. The Jews, following their laws, were limited to giving 39 lashes, as written in Deuteronomy, chapter 25 3, which speaks of not exceeding 40 lashes, so as not to humiliate the person too much. The Romans, on the other hand, did not have a fixed number of lashes and were often very cruel in their punishments. After beating Paul and Silas, they threw them in prison, entrusting them to the care of a jailer. The story that happens next in prison is surprising and shows how things can take unexpected turns. The jailer, possibly thinking he had ended Paul and Silas's activities, had no idea what was to come. What he thought was a victory ended up being the beginning of his own transformation. The jailer may have been a retired soldier who settled in the Roman colony, a common practice for veterans who received land as part of their retirement. The function of a jailer in a Roman prison was not easy and often involved keeping prisoners in extreme conditions. Paul and Silas were placed in the safest and probably most torturous part of the prison, where their feet were shackled to a log. This log was a piece of wood with spaces to hold feet, and sometimes hands and necks, forcing the prisoner to stay in an uncomfortable and painful position. Paul and Silas faced extremely harsh conditions in prison. After being brutally beaten, they had their backs covered with open and bloody wounds, but received no treatment or medicine to alleviate the pain and prevent infections. In this context of suffering, the story takes us to a deeply impactful moment. It was midnight, and despite the terrible circumstances, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns, praising God so loudly that even the other prisoners woke up and heard them. It is amazing to think that, even in the face of so much pain, they chose to praise and pray, entrusting their difficulties to God. This act of faith is a powerful example of how we can find strength and joy in praise, even in the most difficult times. Amidst this scene of worship, something extraordinary happened. Suddenly, a great earthquake shook the foundations of the prison. This was not a common event in the region, which further highlighted its significance. The earthquake was so strong that all the prison doors flew open and the chains that bound the prisoners were loosed. Incredibly, despite the intensity of the tremor, the structure of the prison remained intact, a clear sign of God's presence and control. This miracle not only physically freed the prisoners, but also represented a spiritual liberation. Paul and Silas, recognizing the power of the moment, decided not to flee. Instead, 
they saw an opportunity to impact the lives of the other prisoners and the jailer himself. The story takes an even more dramatic turn when the jailer wakes up. Faced with the fear of being severely punished, he was about to commit suicide, considered an honorable way out in the face of his failure, according to Roman norms. At this critical moment, when the jailer thought everything was lost and that death was his only way out, a voice echoed in the darkness. Paul, realizing the man's despair, shouted to him not to hurt himself, assuring him that all the prisoners were still there. These words stopped the jailer at the last second, saving his life. He then asked for light and, trembling, ran to Paul and Silas. Upon verifying that all the prisoners were indeed in their cells, the jailer's behavior changed drastically. He prostrated himself at the feet of Paul and Silas, possibly thinking they were more than mere men, perhaps even deities. This could be due to the accounts of the possessed young woman who had called them servants of the Most High God. Even without a clear understanding of the God of Israel, since Philippi did not have a synagogue, the impact of Paul's actions and words was enough to make the jailer reconsider everything he knew or thought he knew about them. After the earthquake and the miraculous liberation in prison, the jailer asked Paul and Silas a transformative question, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? This question is essential for anyone who is seeking true change in their lives. You need to recognize that something is missing before you can find the solution. Paul answered simply and profoundly, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. This statement highlights the essence of the gospel, which is salvation by grace through faith. It is not a matter of rituals or profound knowledge, but of trust and surrender to Jesus. Some people may find this form of salvation to be too easy, worrying that it promotes superficial faith. But Paul saw genuine repentance in the jailer, who showed himself to be humble and eager to change. The jailer did not need theology classes or complicated discussions, he just needed to believe. After this conversation, Paul and Silas shared the message of Jesus with the whole jailer's family. Still that night, the jailer took care of the missionary's wounds, and then he and all his were baptized. This shows that the message of the gospel was open to everyone in the house, not just the jailer. Each family member had the opportunity to hear and accept the faith for themselves. After the baptism, the jailer took Paul and Silas to his house, where he prepared a meal for them. They celebrated together, happy about the new faith that had embraced the whole jailer's family. The next day, the magistrates sent to release Paul and Silas, but the apostle did not accept to leave the prison discreetly. He pointed out that, as Roman citizens, he and Silas had been beaten and imprisoned unjustly without a fair trial, which was illegal. Paul demanded that the magistrates themselves come to free them publicly. Upon learning that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, the magistrates were afraid, for they could face serious legal consequences for having violated the rights of Roman citizens. They went to the prison, apologized, and asked Paul and Silas to leave the city to avoid further problems. After being released, Paul and Silas did not leave immediately. They went to Lydia's house, where they met with other followers of Jesus, offered comfort, and were comforted as well. This visit also served to strengthen the newly formed Christian community in Philippi. Only after that did they leave the city, making sure that the local church was well established and encouraged. In this story, we learn important lessons about God's purpose. Although there is pain amidst it, we find joy in victory thanks to Christ. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. God bless you.